Do you have any idea what it's like to be the only one without a girlfriend? Even if I get one someday, I'll still be the guy who got a girl after Sheldon Cooper! This video was brought to you with the help of my lovely patrons and super thanks to owners. To become a patron, please go to the link here. And to donate via super thanks, please click the button underneath this video. Now, without further ado, let's go into the video. So by the time the Big Bang Theory finale aired in May of 2019, all of the main male cast members ended up married. Or should I say, all but one of them did. Raj ended the 12 year series with no one. How is this possible? After the first six seasons, Raj was finally talking to women without the use of alcohol and was given multiple love interests. So what went wrong? In the end, it's really not that hard to figure out. It's simply because the writers hate Raj. Simple as that. I'd argue the writers hate most of the characters on the show, constantly making them miserable and fighting one another and saying some pretty awful things to their so-called friends. But Raj in particular, as the only Indian man on the show and honestly the only main cast member of color in the series, faces double the scorn than his white counterparts. So in this video, I'm going to be dissecting Raj's character, why he didn't end up with a girlfriend or female companion while the other male characters did, even Stuart, and how it all ties back to Orientalism and white American propaganda. So without further ado, let's go. Raj starts out the show along with the main cast of male characters, Leonard, Howard, and Sheldon. However, he starts out slightly worse off in that he can't speak to women. Period. It's not until season 1 episode 8, The Grasshopper Experiment, that he learns that he can speak to women while drunk. And it's not until the season 6 finale that he can finally speak to women without alcohol. <laughs> what? I, I am unlovable! Ugh, that's just the booze talking. <laughs> no. It's not, I haven't had a drink since last night. <laughs> Though it is true that each of the main male cast members have their own individual hang-ups, Raj's hang-up is painted as the most odd because of this condition. Not only that, but he's Indian. He's an immigrant from New Delhi and comes from a family of wealthy gynecologists. He's portrayed throughout the series as a spoiled child because of his dependency on mummy and daddy. To make matters worse, he's in touch with his feminine side. Girls night, girls night. <laughs> Though he does act as sexist as the other men on the show. For example, demeaning Penny, it's usually just when he's drunk. Penny dear, why don't you shoot another silver bullet my way? When he's sober with the guys, they're constantly saying that he needs to check his testosterone levels, has ovaries, is on his period, and just wants to have fun. -un. The fact that you just want to have fun. -un. <laughs> And what I mean when I say that Raj is in touch with his feminine side is just that he cares about his appearance and is outwardly emotional. He likes going to girls' night, he has a female pet dog, he likes wearing face masks, he cares about watching his figure, etc. 100 calorie snack pack? Got the Y chromosome while you were there? You might be short one. He even straightens his hair until the later seasons when he's finally able to wear it naturally, saying that he only straightened it because he wanted to look like Howard, his first friend in the US. Raj being confident about who he is is a constant point of ridicule in the show. He's made to be the butt of the joke because he wants to take care of himself, not only that, but he's ridiculed by his friends. And yes, the show is rife with the friends being mean to one another, but with Raj, it hits differently because again, he's the only main character of color on the show. He even makes it a point to complain that he has to sit on the floor while all the white people get to sit on the sofa, but then he's made to shut up about it. Raj also being feminine means that he also must be gay or at least bisexual. There are plenty of moments in the show where Raj and Howard do things that could be seen as them having an intimate relationship. Howard, have you and Rajesh finally summoned the courage to express your latent homosexual feelings towards one another? It might explain why the two of you have created an ersatz homosexual marriage to satisfy your need for intimacy. <laughs> That's basically what I just said. You brought your husband to work? Do you know the rules? And rather than this being seen as something to possibly explore, it's again supposed to be funny. Isn't it funny that the Indian guy is also gay? Hilarious. And though Howard is also part of this relationship, he constantly shoots down Raj or says that he's not as into it as Raj is, even though at times he willingly participates and likes their seemingly gay interactions. How about we go spend the day together? <laughs> Just the two of us. We'll go anywhere you want. 
There's even an episode where Raj has to state that he's definitely not gay to the camera to clear up the rumors that I guess were circling at the time. Definitely not gay. So it's fun to make fun of the fact that he might be gay, but if he was actually gay, the writers would know they're going too far. So don't worry folks at home, he's straight. As this 2019 article entitled Situating CBS as the Big Bang Theory in a Post-Colonial Framework states, According to Edward Said, the concept of Orientalism provides a rationalization for European colonialism based on a self-serving history in which the West constructed the East as extremely different and inferior and therefore in need of Western intervention or rescue. This routine, followed by many American teleseries, is that of often using ethnicity as a catalyst for humor, and what follows is the deeper impact of a certain community's identity being bracketed under certain adjectives, assumptions, and most of all, belittling stereotypes. This in turn makes the character's country of origin a loosely realized figment of misguided cultural appropriations. The jokes at the expense of Raj's heritage and country of origin, India, are too numerous to count, but I'll try to do so here. Firstly, the showrunners love making fun of Indian cuisine. Basically, Indian food gives you diarrhea and everyone there is suffering from cholera and dysentery. Isn't that funny? Any monopoly is just like regular, except the money's in rupees. Instead of hotels, you build call centers. <laughs> and when you pick a chance card, you might die of dysentery. <laughs> oh, just FYI, that was racist. Oh, and there's no indoor plumbing. Cue the Slumdog Millionaire jokes of the early 2010s. Next, there's the joke that Raj hates India and Indian food, so therefore it's okay to make fun of his homeland and culture because he hates it too. In the episode The Pirate Solution, when Raj faces deportation, he whines incessantly about how he's totally disinterested in going to India. According to him, India is hot, loud, and there's so many people. You have no idea. They're everywhere. It's like going to Comic-Con, but everyone is dressed in the same costume. Indian guy. Country is one endless Comic-Con, except everybody's wearing the same costume. <laughs> Indian guy. The kind of comedy as depicted in the Big Bang Theory is also the self-denigrating humor aimed at one's own culture and its members. Raj's homeland is seen as inferior and subordinate to America. When Raj complains about India in The Pirate Solution, Sheldon suggests that he become a pirate, which would be a suitable alternative to living in India. To them, India is a strange, uninteresting place they would never even consider visiting, as is made clear from Howard's remark that India is a very far plane right away and that they should instead Skype. Howard, Raj's supposed best friend, doesn't even want to visit his friend's home country if given the chance. What an ass. Raj and Howard do have a breakup towards the end of the show, but it's resolved after two episodes and Howard honestly makes zero effort to try to understand where Raj is coming from. In fact, for years he lied to Raj saying that foreigners give presents to Americans on Thanksgiving and wash their clothes on the 4th of July. Raj, or should I say Kunal Nair, exaggerates his Indian accent for comedic effect on the show. For a lot of people, what's funny is hearing that accent. It's a part of this post-racial world. If you're not going to talk about race, how do you show it in different ways? I do want to point out here that his accent is real. That's actually the name of his memoir. Um, but he definitely pushes it on the show in order to be funny. And whether that's his choice or the director's, I don't know. But it's just something that... I personally have realized. The idea of an accent is something associated with being Indian, says Shilpa Dave, author of Indian Accents, Brown Voice, and Racial Performance in American Television and Film. She adds that conforming to stereotypes makes the projected Indian men more appealing and less threatening to non-Indian audiences. According to Vina Dovetti, when Hollywood actors use non-standard accents, something extra is being conveyed about the characters. Accents give us a place. They tell us who is like us and who is not. Kunal Nair's heightened accent only posits him as an other, who is forever unable to assimilate himself in present society. As Sheldon describes him, he's the lovable foreigner who struggles to understand our American ways and fails. Even Raj's inability to speak to women is a product of Orientalism. Yes, it's there to show how nerdy and awkward he is. But once again, the Orient, as Saeed has deemed it, is silenced. It makes one wonder if Raj's inability to speak is a comedic aspect of his character or a symptom of a more colonial element in the show. Since Raj is silenced for the first half of the series, Raj can never talk back or have an upper hand. As the foreigner, the U.S. is seen as superior to whatever Raj's culture has to offer. Even Raj himself loves the U.S., so it can't be that bad, right? From, from California to the New York Island, I'm a real Yankee doodle boy. As the article states, Raj's homeland is seen as inferior and subordinate to America. 
because of course it is. Raj being Indian also emasculates him, and thus, like I mentioned above, he's given an accent to be less threatening to white audiences. And again, by given an accent, I mean the directors chose someone who had an accent on purpose. I don't think it's a coincidence that Raj's character that was created by white showrunners has an accent. He also can't even speak to women in the beginning, neutralizing any threat he could possibly be to his white friends and their female partners. Even though later, there are numerous jokes of him fantasizing about being with Howard's girlfriend, and he and Penny eventually do get in bed together, albeit drunk. It's true to an extent that all men on the show are emasculated because the writers again hate them, Leonard by his mother, Howard by his mother, Sheldon by his virtue of being quirky and cowardly, but for Raj, it hits different. Priya, Raj's sister, is another recurring character on the show, but only for a couple of seasons. She's seen as a threat to Penny, as she dates Leonard for a while, and the show acknowledges that outright, pitting the two women against each other. Priya is not only beautiful and a successful lawyer, but she's seen as hypersexual because she's supposedly educated in the ways of the Kama Sutra. Amy even compares her to a Bengal tiger that Penny can't compete with. Accomplished professional, and she comes from the culture that literally wrote the book on neat ways to have sex. <laughs> Leonard likens himself to forbidden white fruit as Priya can't date white men in fear of upsetting her parents. Bringing this back to Raj, Raj can't even be the overprotective brother. He tries to set boundaries with his friends, don't date my sister, but of course, Leonard dates her anyway. Not only that, but they have sex in Raj's apartment, and Raj is powerless to stop it, even in his own home. Throughout the show, Raj toys with the idea of getting an arranged marriage. And towards the end, he becomes serious about it with Anu, a highly successful and pragmatic Indian woman. However, they decide to cut it off because Anu gets a job offer in London, and Raj doesn't want to go with her. In addition, Anu doesn't believe in romantic love, but rather that love is a chemical reaction. This hurts Raj because he's a hopeless romantic who wants fireworks. He believes in romance, and it's hard to be with someone who doesn't. So let's go through a quick rundown of Raj's exes and why none of them ended up staying. I think I've listed all of them, but if I'm missing one, please let me know down below. One of Raj's first dates is with Lalita Gupta, an Indian girl that Raj knew as a child. Lalita doesn't work out because she's turned off by Raj's drunk persona. Next, there's what the writers refer to as Deaf Emily, a deaf woman that Raj dates for a while because he can't speak to women unless he's drunk, so since she can't hear him, I guess that nullifies whatever, as Sheldon's mom would say, third world demon is running around in him. Bet she'd be willing to take a shot at whatever third world demon is running around inside of you. That doesn't work out because it's revealed that Emily is a gold digger. After her, there's Lucy who sticks around for multiple episodes. She suffers from social anxiety and is extremely shy. In one episode, they go to the library and have a texting date where they don't have to talk. And here is when Raj delivers the funniest line in the series that I love quoting out of context. I don't know. You ever look at porn websites? No, never. What is porn? She breaks up with him though because she finds their relationship too overwhelming. A lot of us thought that she would end up with Raj in the end, but no. Next, there's Emily Sweeney, a dermatologist who is at first mean to Penny because Raj told her that they hooked up, even when Penny explicitly told him to keep that between them. Emily, as her name implies, is a bit sinister and has a horror kink. She likes to do it in graveyards and watch disturbing movies. Raj isn't that into it, but puts up with it because he's desperate for any kind of female attention. Isn't that funny? While he's dating Dr. Emily, he also meets and starts dating Claire, a bartender and screenwriter. Raj chooses not to tell either girl the whole truth, so he dates both of them. We'll come back to that later. Isabella, a service worker at the university, catches Raj's eye because she's so nice to him. Little does he know or realize that that's kind of her job. As a service worker, she can't really say or be mean to him at risk of being fired. He sets up a candlelit dinner for her and even helps her clean at night so she has more free time to spend with him. Isn't that nice? Not manipulative at all. Raj makes the mistake of serving Mexican food thinking that she's Mexican when she's actually Cuban. Later, he takes her to meet his friends but is embarrassed about her profession and she runs away. Later, they make up and she says that she can now serve him some Pakistani food and Raj replies he's Indian and then she quips, now you know what it's like being stereotyped as if Raj hasn't been stereotyped his entire life. After her, there's Ruchi who only wants to use Raj to try to take Bernadette's job. Following her, there's Nell, who hits it off with Raj, but of course, she's married. 
And then, like I mentioned before, there's Anu, and things don't work out with her because, like I stated before, she has to move to London, and overall, they're just not emotionally compatible. Raj also has a few chances to meet women sporadically throughout the show. For instance, there's an episode where a girl lost her drone, and Raj and Howard return it to her. This could be a chance for Raj to potentially form a new relationship, but of course, he ruins it for himself by being embarrassing and weird. A lot of people say that Raj didn't deserve a love interest because Raj is a cheater as he dates Claire and Emily at the same time. But it's worth pointing out how Leonard also cheats on Penny, but of course they were on a break so it doesn't count even though Penny is rightfully mad about it. Howard cheats on Bernadette in a World of Warcraft style game and Bernadette is angry, but it turns out the troll was actually a dude. Hilarious. And in fact, according to Raj, Claire and Emily know that they're not mutually exclusive. Raj dates two women at once, and that's bad, I guess. But is it worse than trying to upskirt Penny, which Howard does, or put a webcam in Penny's room, which Howard also does, or try to manipulate Penny into kissing him, which Howard also does? But dating two women at once, I guess that's just too much for the writers to handle, and Raj therefore must be punished. They have to draw a line somewhere, so why not draw it at the Indian guy? But honestly, Leonard and Howard are just as bad as Raj, if not worse, when it comes to treating women as objects. In fact, I'd say Howard is the worst one of all, and yet he gets married first. Leonard is an enabler and does nothing to stop his friends from being douchey. Sheldon gets a girlfriend just to prove to the audience at home that he's not asexual, don't worry, and his relationship with Amy starts off as a joke that later becomes serious. Sheldon, who should have ended up with no one as he states that he doesn't like human interaction, gets more sympathy from the writers because he's white, while Raj doesn't have that privilege. He's a perpetual foreigner, and him getting with a white girl or an Indian girl is just one too many characters for the writers to care about. Kunal Nair, the actor who plays Raj on The Big Bang Theory, was born in Hammersmith, London to Indian immigrant parents. He later moved with his family to New Delhi, where he grew up and went to school. In 1999, he moved to the U.S. to study, and the rest is history. In 2007, The Big Bang Theory aired, and he stayed on until its finale in 2019. He became the world's third highest paid television actor in 2015 and 2018, with earnings of $20 million and $23.5 million USD. In 2015, he wrote his memoir entitled, Yes, My Accent is Real, and some other things I haven't told you. Nayer is also Sikh and wears a kara on his wrist to honor that. It's visible as seen on The Big Bang Theory. He's also married to Neha Kapoor, a model actress and Femina Miss India 2006. I find it really ironic that in the series, the writers made sure Raj ended up with no one when in reality, he's married to a former beauty queen. Overall, he's doing well and of course is a millionaire. And he really loved being a part of the Big Bang Theory, as he said in 2022. Yeah, you know, I often say for me personally, ending Big Bang Theory was like breaking up with the love of your life when you know nothing is wrong, but it's just time. That's really what it felt like, you know? I'm still processing what that entire journey was like. 279 episodes, you know? I grew up on that show. In the end... Raj ends up single, and I guess that's fine. Maybe he learns that friendship and self-acceptance is more important than love. But Raj is the hopeless romantic of the group, so how can he have a satisfying character arc if he doesn't find his one true love? I don't know. Raj deserved better. Though the writers did try to right some wrongs towards the end of the show, as Raj confronts Howard, is able to wear his natural hair, and gets a bigger part of the story, that doesn't also undo all the harm that they did do. So that's it for this one. I hope you all liked it, and if you did, please leave a comment down below about what you think of Raj's character. Give it a like, share it with someone. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.